The Raspberry Pi Pico is a powerful microcontroller that can be used for a variety of projects. I recently began a build to create a controller that can use the Pico's Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities to control other projects with added NeoPixel support for LED feedback. Let's take a look. As my modular biped is inspired by BD-1 from the Star Wars Jedi games, I thought it would be a good idea to keep the theme going for this controller. I designed the project to resemble a lightsaber hilt with NeoPixels spread out along each module so that various effects could be displayed. The project includes an 18650 battery connected to an uninterruptible power supply module, a Raspberry Pi Pico and a selection of addressable LED NeoPixels. The controller is housed in a 3D printed case with a button and joystick for user input. I wanted to create a design that would allow me to experiment with modules so they could be swapped as needed depending on the project. I opted to use magnetic connectors to create a 5 volt bus and a pair of wires to connect the Pico to the NeoPixels in each module. Initially I wanted to create my own power management board with a custom PCB that would convert the battery voltage from the 18650 to 5 volts and allow charging via a TP4056 charging module. Both modules are cheap and easy to source. I added them to a perf board, but there were a couple of issues. The first problem was that the TP4056 is not designed to charge the battery if there's a load on the output. In other words, the project needs to be switched off while charging. Normally that isn't a problem, but in this instance, I wanted the project to be always on and allow the battery to work as an uninterruptible power supply so that the battery supplies the power when disconnected from the charger. The second issue was just that the custom board didn't fit very well within the project. So I started looking at alternatives. There are a selection of 18650 UPS modules available from various suppliers and they looked promising. Unfortunately, I had huge trouble getting an order to go through and I had three separate orders canceled. Luckily, I was contacted by Zach from Wildware.net, who offered to help. The project had been on hold for weeks because of this issue, and so it was great to get things moving again. If you'd be interested in getting one of these modules for yourself, I'll include the link to the listing on the Wildware website in the Bill of Materials. Once the modules arrived, I began to experiment. The board is comprised of three main areas. The charging module for the battery with a 5 volt input, either by USB-C or direct header connection, and the battery connection. The DC to DC converter to output a fixed 5 volt from the battery voltage, and a pair of headers in the center of the board that are used to enable the DC to DC converter. This means you can attach a switch to kill the power to the converter when the board isn't in use and prevent drain of the battery as much as possible. The board also has an 18650 battery holder in place. This is normally perfectly usable, but for this project, I wanted to remove some of the bulk, so I desoldered that holder, removed the connectors, and then soldered them in place directly. Next, I designed and 3D printed a holder for the board and battery to make the UPS module as slim as possible. The wiring for the UPS module became complex for a couple of reasons. I needed to connect the power to a couple of NeoPixel strips that would sit on either side of the module, and also to the magnetic connectors that would feed power to the other modules in the project. The magnetic connectors can be ordered pre-wired, so I just needed to connect all of the 5 volt wires together to the output of the converter, and then the same for the negative wires. The connectors also have two signal wires, which allows me to create a loop throughout the entire project from the Raspberry Pi Pico GPIO output through all the NeoPixel modules in series. This way, a single GPIO pin can control all the NeoPixels, even if the modules are swapped and changed while the project is powered. To finish the module wiring, I connected the input signal wire from the top magnetic connector to the NeoPixels in this module then to the signal wire of the bottom magnetic connector so the signal could continue out of the module. Finally, I wired the other return signal wires together to allow the signal to pass unhindered back to the upper modules. If that sounds confusing, imagine how I felt. I've included a diagram for more information if you're looking to build this yourself. Next, I needed to test that the setup connected the NeoPixels to the Pico. I created a test rig that allowed me to screw a magnetic connector to a breadboard 
wired up the Raspberry Pi, and uploaded a basic script to change all the NeoPixels to the same color. The Pico module has a couple of functions that I wanted to talk about. The basic functionality allows the color and brightness of all the NeoPixels to be changed using a small joystick module connected to a couple of pins on the Pico. This was quite simple to create, and I even added a debounce to the code so that multiple color changes couldn't happen at once with a single action. I added another push button for a secondary behavior and linked that action to turn the controller into a flashlight by fading all the NeoPixels except the emitter and changing the emitter to full white. Finally, I wanted to include some kind of presence sensor so I could dim the NeoPixels if no motion was detected. For that, I attached an RCWL microwave sensor. This sensor takes a 5 volt input, but also includes a 3 volt output, which I used to power the joystick. I could also have connected the joystick to the 3 volt bus on the Pico as an alternative. Remember, I can't pass 5 volts directly through the joystick into the pins of the Pico because they only accept a maximum of 3.3 volts. So this was a good option. Once I assembled this wiring, I found that everything worked as expected with a few tweaks. The problem was that this wiring was difficult to reproduce, and I wanted others to be able to follow this build themselves, so I jumped into KiCad and designed a PCB. This new PCB included all of the connectors so that the modules could be soldered in place without complicated wiring. I also included headers to connect the same magnetic connectors to the complete board. PCB Way kindly offered to sponsor the creation of this PCB. At this point, I was keen to see how this would work as a self-contained module, so I got to work creating a 3D design to house it all. Because I wanted to base the design on something from the Star Wars universe, I found a paid 3D model for the Serenity lightsaber from Star Wars Jedi Survivor, and printed it so I could get a feel for what works and what I'd like to change. Then I started designing a real-world version using Onshape. I'll admit, it took me longer than I expected to create this design. I had a few rules that I wanted to follow that definitely made it harder, like including the ability to assemble and disassemble the main modules without using tools. That definitely limited my options, but it was a good challenge to improve my 3D modeling skills. Similarly, I wanted to avoid glue and screws wherever possible so the components could be removed easily. I also wanted to include a 3D printed screw thread connector between the modules so I could create a standard design pattern for adding or swapping modules in future. This took a few attempts to get right because of the tolerances on my 3D printer, but now these modules screw together easily and feel stable when they're connected.
The current version looks something like this. There are definitely improvements I'd like to make, but the good thing is I can redesign and print new modules as often as I need to. Each module includes the same four pin magnetic connectors on the top and bottom, unless they're an end piece, so they can be stacked and swapped. The emitter includes a smaller screw thread that allows it to be swapped. And when I started testing, I could see that this white PLA piece would let the light from the emitter NeoPixels bleed through, which I wasn't pleased with. I reached out again to PCBWay and they offered to reprint not only the emitter, but the surround for the UPS in aluminium. These pieces have a great finish and make the whole build feel more sturdy and realistic. I love how they create the illusion of an internal core that runs through the hilt and the metal makes the build heavier and more satisfying to hold. The process was easy to follow by using the STL files I already generated for the prints, dropping them into the website and then completing the order. If you're looking to print this yourself, I definitely recommend following this plan and printing those pieces in aluminium. Take a look at the PCBWay website for pricing. Once everything was printed, the assembly was pretty straightforward and didn't need any tools or glue, which is a change from my other projects. I mentioned earlier that this was a Pico controller, but what exactly will it control? Well, the good news is the Pico includes Wi-Fi and Bluetooth modules, so you can easily write code to connect to other Internet of Thing devices and send or receive commands. So the plan is I can use this build to control other builds with the joystick and buttons. It also means I can add more control options in future if I want to. So watch this space for future changes. The software for the project is written in MicroPython and available in the repository linked in the description. If you'd like to build this yourself, take a look at the makerforge.tech website for the post that includes all of the details on how to build it and a link to everything you'll need. Thanks again to PCBWay for providing the custom 3D printed parts and the PCB used in this build, and to Wildware for the UPS module. Thanks for watching.